going on, everybody out there all across the land? Of course, you know you're listening to the number one show on the net, the Keith Harris Show, right here on Hotline Radio. Now, I have with me today a very special guest. Uh, forgive me for not getting this gentleman on the line uh, in, in the near past. Uh, we've been looking forward to this conversation for uh, quite some time. He is an extraordinary, extraordinary, should I say, actor, writer, and he is also now the director of the 2015 Galactic Film Festival. Without any further ado, I'd like to roll out the red carpet and give a special drum roll for the one and only Ian Pugh. How you doing, Ian? I'm doing great today. Thanks, Keith. How are you? Hey, man, I'm doing good. Finally got some nice weather. The sun is shining, light breeze blowing. It feels great. Right. What's it like? Uh, what's it? You on the West Coast, right? Yeah, it's sunny. It was pretty windy this morning. I woke up to the sound of the wind blowing the trees like crazy. Uh, it's calmed down. It's you know, warm but cool in the shade. Oh, okay. I bet y'all can. I, y'all probably can appreciate a, a cool breeze every now and then, huh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's only gonna get hotter this summer too. <laughs> That's what's up. Uh, you, during the summertime, I, I assume you get to go to the beach sometimes, or you 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 know work a lot, or. I don't go to the beach, but uh, my parents have a place on Morro Bay, so we go over there whenever we get a chance, which is nothing, but they have a really nice place, and it's really cool in Morro Bay, so yeah, we love it over there. We're not really beach people, but beach town people, definitely. Oh, okay. That's what's up. Um, Now, you know, let's let's jump right in. Uh, first of all, give the people out there all over, all across, you know, everywhere, listening all over the world, first of all... How did you, you know, and after after this, we'll get into some of the, uh, the the wonderful projects that you're in. And I've seen uh, one of your series, is, as a matter of fact, and it's funny. I got some questions to ask you, but just at first, kind of give, give everybody out there an idea of how you, you know, how, how, you're, how you got your foot in the door to the industry in the first place, kind of where you began. Okay, where did I begin? Let's see. I guess it all goes back to high school. Um, I've always been into films. And I've always thought filmmaking was really cool. And in high school, I borrowed my grandma's video camera to do some school projects, and she never got the camera back. Cause I just, <laughs> you know, kept making stuff. And whenever we had to do a presentation for class, I would ask the instructor if I could make a video instead, and they were really cool about it. Um, and then I always liked watching DVD special features. I thought it was fascinating how films were made. Right. And so after high school, I looked into different film schools, and I found the Academy of Art up in San Francisco. And I applied there, and I got in, and. Uh, studied cinematography and editing, uh, graduated from there, and uh, did some work for a wedding video company for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And then I moved to my hometown of Porterville, which is like nothing there for filmmaking. It's a farming town. Right. And so once I was there, though, I just kind of got the itch, or yeah, I got the itch and had to scratch it again and started making films there just on my own dollar, on my own time with my friends. Uh, and really kind of learned a lot, you know, from school, obviously, but then actually doing it is kind of what got me back into it. Right. Uh, so I guess that's kind of how I got into doing all this stuff. You know, you know, I, okay. Now here you say, you know, you first started out, you know, with the video camera, grandma's camera, stuff like that. What was the first, what was the first project of to you, to you? I'm, I'm sure they were all of value. They, they all had worth to you. They were your own works, but which, right. which one was it for you that, you felt like kind of propelled you or at least made you feel like, Hey, you know what? I, I think I know what I'm doing on this a bit. Okay. Uh, I guess back in high school, uh, I had a friend over, actually two friends over and I was a big fan of the evil dead films by Sam Raimi. Uh-huh. And I thought those films were very inspirational. Just the way that they were made. I mean, I watched the commentaries on those films hearing them talk about how they did it. And so I kind of remade my own version of the evil dead, uh, just with a couple of friends in my parent in my house, my parents house. And, um, it's terrible by today's standards, I'm sure. I haven't seen it in years. But that was probably the first thing that I did that I thought was kind of cool. Uh, and then after that, uh, you know, went to film school, I actually learned how to actually do things and learned about screen direction and composition and, and everything. Wow. Uh, uh, and when my wife and I got married, we did a silent film for our wedding. Instead of doing a photo montage like most people have at their weddings, we wanted to have something fun and original. So we did like a, a black and white kind of Buster Keaton inspired silent film. And that thing, I think, probably. The first thing that I ever did that I thought, wow, this is, this is really good. You know, that sounds pretty cool, as a matter of fact, just having it kind of in black and white. And did it give it... Yeah, black and white. I, had, like, I cut shot it at film speeds. I had studied a lot of Buster Keaton films and kind of learned about the technique that he used and the comedic timing that he would do. And so certain shots were sped up a little bit more for whatever was going on. And so I tried to make it look as best I could like what exactly that Buster Keaton would have done. Right, right. Now, um, 
you know, also, okay, so now what, you know, okay, so now you're there and, and that was your first one. What brought on, I, I got, well, you know, first let's talk about uh, Dat Pig Dow. What was that about? Okay, the Dat Pig Dow, and that's probably the, one of my favorite things that I've ever done. That was the next thing that I did after that silent film. Uh-huh. And that was, I'm still really proud of to this day. And that was inspired by, uh, again, my wife and I, we got married on Halloween, and that's where we showed our silent film. And about two years later, we were, you know, it was probably September, and we are thinking, we should have a Halloween party this year. We should, you know, we love Halloween. Let's do something really cool, invite all our friends and family over, and well, let's make it, like, really cool. What can we do? And, and I think it was she that suggested, let's, why don't you, why don't we do a, a short film or something? And I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. So I went in my room, and I started writing, and uh, came up with the idea for Die, Take, Die, and it, it was pretty small scale, kind of, but it was also a 1960s, you know, um, Omahaj, and so I wanted to make it look like it was in the 60s, took place in the 60s, so I spent the next month and a half, you know, making all the props. We shot the entire film in my garage, where I dressed it up to look like an office building, mm-hmm. uh, to look like a, a tunnel down the street. And so, yeah, we just shot that about a, a month and a half, and I had a friend of mine who's a musician. I uh, worked with him on doing all the music, where he has a cello, so he could, you know, I would hum the themes, and he would just play it on his cello, and we recorded it. And so that's kind of where that came from, just we wanted to have a fun thing to go to our friends and family. Right. Now, you know... Halloween. Now, in, in talking about that, you know, and, and you know, mentioning, the, the, I guess, the black and white setting or, or that, you know, that different type of style. Now, I I caught some John Neptune, okay? And, and first of all, let me tell you, 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 you were great in that part, you know. Um, oh, thank you. Your, your, acting was, your, acting, your acting was awesome, but then you looked the part, too. And that's what was really, oh, right, and that's what was really cool oh, about it. That's nice to hear, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, and don't get me wrong. Look, for everybody out there listening, right? Don't get me wrong, because like, you know, of co- look, and I gotta ask you about this monster that I saw in there too. I got really gotta ask you what that was in a few minutes. But and, and what I mean by that, I mean, okay, you were looking normal and stuff like that, but you you just really knew how to kept that that facial expression of, um, somewhat. Uh, you were humorous at the same time. But then at the same time, you had this straight face, straight faceness about you. And I noticed that that was shot um, in a black and white scene, too, as well. Right. Yeah. Now, so is that something that you kind of gravitated towards was was just that look in particular is what you like or, you know, was, you know, is, is that a phase or. Um, I think it's a temporary thing. I hope to someday not ever do a black and white film again. I'm actually not really <laughs> a fan of black and white, even though half my films are in black and white. Right. Um, most of it came out of like with Die, Pig, Die that was supposed to take place in 1960 so I wanted it to be in black and white because like Psycho was in black and white so I wanted it to kind of have that be uh, the Buck Keaton style film black and white because again 1920s that's what they had mm-hmm. and John Neptune I wanted it to look like it was made in the 1950s I really wanted it to look and feel like it was made in the 50s with kind of a bit more modern techniques and stuff as far as camera work and everything and so that's part of why John Neptune's in black and white uh, there's also some thematic reasons story wise why it's in black and white which you'll see by the end of season three, which will be releasing probably this way fall or early next spring. Right. But it's, it's mostly just the aesthetic of, of what it is. Um, whenever I make the show, we shoot it in color. We make the costumes, thinking about colors. Whenever I do all the matte paintings and stuff, I do them in color. It's kind of a shame that I have to put it in black and white. Mm. There's a lot of really pretty blues and, and, and reds in there that, that you just don't see. Nobody ever gets to see the stuff. I get to see it. And then I just put the black and white filter on and then get rid of it. Well, see, so it's, it's really <laughs> just the aesthetic of what it is. And, well, see, that's the thing about it, though. I liked it. You know what I mean? Because obviously to, you know, obviously to anybody watching it, they can tell that it wasn't like, you know, how sometimes, you know, the old movies come on and people are like, oh, God, this is from 1920. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that you could tell that when you did that, that obviously that's not how it was shot. But that was just kind of the imagery you wanted to give it. And I really liked it. Reason being is because it was it was in that old in that black and white, but it was still modern day. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's something, too, that I'm very conscious of, because I think when you look at old films, uh, they're, especially science fiction films, because they didn't have the budget to make the big, you know, set pieces and effects that they needed. Mm-hmm. They would have, you know, one small, you know, shoot the whole thing on a set, or maybe they change the set around a little, and it wasn't that interesting, maybe one long camera angle. And so, with John Neptune, I wanted to make it kind of look and feel like the old films, but I also want to make it feel more modern for my audience, because most people want to watch an old film and sit there through the boring dialogue. So I'm trying to keep the camera always moving as far as, you know, cut from, you know, quick cut, keep it very fast paced uh, right. because I want to keep the attention span. And I'm a, I'm a Star Wars fan, and one thing that George Lucas always would do was instead of having two people in a room talking, he'd have part of the conversation here, and then he would say, oh, there's a window over there. What's outside that window? Let's go out there. And then he would get the scene out over there. 
And so he's always, you know, moving the, the audience from location to location to location. So that's something that I really want to do with John Edson, to just keep you interested visually. So, you know, as interesting as the story is, I want you to be visually entertained by all these really cool set pieces and cool locations. Right. And so that's kind of what I want to do with, you know, making it more modern, I guess. Yeah, because that because that right there, I sat and I started watching it. It was actually something that I could watch, even if even though it was in black and white. And I don't know the last right. time, you know, maybe I haven't been doing my homework, you know, but I don't know the last time when I could actually watch a, a program in black and white, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, it's definitely a different kind of otherworldly feel, too, when you have it yeah. in black and white. Exactly. And I'm, okay, you're hitting it right on the head because I'm not even a fan of those. And, and no disrespect to those. <laughs> like, I was never like the Trekkie kind of guy. You know what I mean? And, you know, it, it was wonderful work. Don't get me wrong, but it, it just wasn't really my style. Right. And and yeah. so so this was totally different, though, because, you know, it was in black and white, but it was still the script was good. Like you say, things were moving. Things were happening. You had the girls in the right. film at the same time, you know, um, you and, and, and you you were the one that got. I saw you throw that element in there, too. Like you were the lady like John Neptune was also the ladies man. I think I think he thinks he's a ladies man. I'm not sure he actually is a ladies man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, now, you wrote that as well, right? Um, initially, yeah, I wrote the original versions of the, of the stories and the screenplays of John Eptoon, and then a good friend of mine, Rachel Hitler, uh, she's a, a great writer, a great director, um, and I asked her to kind of look at my scripts and edit them, and then she ended up kind of taking them and, and embellishing them quite a bit and making them much, much better than I ever wrote them. And so it's definitely a collaborative effort. I'd say it's about 50-50 about who or what on, on the series. Right. Now, how was it, okay, acting and writing, okay, definitely two separate things, de- de- definitely two separate jobs. How did you make the transition from one to the other? Because you were acting a little bit before you started writing, right? Little tiny things. I'm actually, I don't consider myself an actor at all. I didn't go to school for acting. I went to school for cinematography and editing. Well, how are you but acting so always- well? I've always watched a lot of movies. I've always, you know, kind of understood acting, I think. And that's one of the things in film schools, you actually do take a couple acting classes and a couple of directing classes. So you need to know how to direct actors, how to be an actor. Uh, and so in writing the stories, I don't know, I, I, I guess I just, I wrote it, uh, I wrote the film that I wanted to see originally. So okay. I want to watch something that, I'm sorry, I'll make something that I would want to watch. Okay. And so in, in the original episodes, I don't think my acting is all that great because originally uh, it was me, you know, directing it, me editing it, me acting in it. And then by the third episode, I brought my friend Rachel on again, the, the, the person who wrote, co-wrote the, the scripts with me. And she has a lot of uh, experience in theater directing. So I asked her to help to help direct the thing, and now she's actually the director of John Epps, and every episode is directed by her. And I think I've come a long way just by having her teach me how to act on the show. So I think the later episodes, my acting is much better than it was in the original episode. So oh. it's definitely been a big learning experience. Wow. I tell you. And, and, you know, that makes me want that that makes me kind of want to ask you, you know, how much of your personality, because if you don't consider yourself that much of an actor and I've, I've watched myself and I'm thinking, OK, this guy's doing some good acting because you like I say, you have the facial expressions cut out. Um, There was one scene, as a matter of fact, when um the, the lady who was in rain, I can't remember her name, but she was wearing a white top. And she, yeah. yeah, she was sending you guys on the mission. And I, eventually you she took the ride with you on the mission, as a matter of fact. Yeah, right. OK. And uh, in, in that you, even in that particular scene, I'm looking at your act and I'm like, OK, this guy has it kind of down. I mean, you know, he's he's making the funny faces. He's got the dialogue together. Now I'm thinking to myself, OK, if you don't that was good acting. And if you don't consider yourself really an actor, you know, I think I think I'm definitely an actor. But I just think professionally, I'm not an actor. I, I wasn't trained professionally. I oh, kind of okay. learned how to do it on my own, I guess. And so that, that's, that's just me being me. Really. <laughs> uh, the later episodes, I was able to a lot more emotionally driven scenes. John Epstein is pretty angry in later episodes. And I'm not an angry person at all. So that was a big challenge for me to kind of figure out what, what would make John Epstein angry. What, what would, you know, things don't really make me angry. I'm a passive person. So I have to actually get angry for the scene. Yeah. So. It's been interesting to, to do that. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say, too. And that, that's exactly what I was going to ready to touch on. As I was like, okay, so then some of that must be, you know, you must, obviously you have that kind of fun personality. You know, you could you could be talking to somebody in a regular conversation on the street and, and still give those those expressions. I think I'm, I'm a pretty goofy guy where I can actually be pretty silly and yeah. be kind of over the top if I want to. So I think that's just, I, I don't know, like I have a natural... Thing. I don't know. Hey man, that's cool. I tell you what, that's cool, and and, and the reason for that is is also it is good to apply to the films you make because let me tell you something. It gives it, it gives the viewer something to 
It, it, listen, it gives the, the viewer a relax. That means you're going to make things that, that are relaxed. I'm sure you have a variety and you'll go, you know, with different expressions and, and moods, you know, uh, in films. But for the ones you make like that, it's good because it's good, clean fun. And I think people yeah. like that and they need to see that. Right. You know? Yeah, I mean, the, the stories for John Neptune, it's, I think it's a very serious, straightforward war story about this character who has to overcome these challenges of war and think for himself. But at the same time, it's fun and it's goofy and it's silly. Like, I want people to be able to watch it, get really into drama, but then laugh at the acting, laugh at, at some, some of the one-liners and stuff. And uh, Because, you know, not everybody's going to be interested in the hardcore science fiction or the hardcore, uh, you know, seriousness of it. So I want people to be able to laugh at the comedy. You know, I want, there's a little bit for everybody. Even if you're not in science fiction, I think you can still enjoy and pull something out of it to relate to your own everyday life. Hey, you know, and, and look, I'll move on after this, but listen, touching on that black and white again, I tell you, it, I liked it because when, you know, when you look at the pictures in the stills, as you say, they're in color and you can obviously see the color. But then when you go and you watch it and it's like black and white, you already know you're, you're like, okay, this is going to be something right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but let, now let me ask you guys, how did you get in space like that? How did we get in space like that? What did we shoot? Yeah, well, yeah, without giving too much away, but like, listen, you guys were flying through space. I mean, you know, okay. you're, <laughs> you're, you're on the spaceship in the whole nine yards, you know, and, and I, I guess I'm kind of speaking in character for all the listeners out there pretty much. Right. But uh, yeah, like, how did you guys like, listen, the, the, the effects in that, because listen, these yeah. were also webisodes. These are shorts or whatever, right? Yeah, they're all about four and a half to six minutes long. Yeah. So we're asking, where do we shoot it? How do we, how do we put the show together? Yeah, without giving away how okay. you put the show together. Okay, well, it's not giving away too much other than the fact that we shoot everything in my garage. Um, I have a, a big two-car garage. Nothing fancy, not a big film studio or anything. What? I have a green screen that I got off of eBay. Yeah, it's all just my garage. <laughs> um, we have a big green screen that I got off eBay just hanging up against against the wall. Uh, I have some nice lights that I got a few years ago, and we light it. We shoot every single shot you see in the garage. Man. Uh, and then, so all on the green screen, and then in order to put us you know, in the spaceship, on this planet, on that planet, wherever the locations we need to be, those are all miniature models. I build every single miniature model that's in the film. I have a couple people help me now. But they're all miniature models, all about you know, one, two feet wide usually. Uh, I build them out of foam core, styrofoam, cardboard, and I'll design the walls in my computer in Photoshop, and then I'll print those images out, and I'll just glue them onto the foam core. So it has realistic textures like wood or cement, whatever it needs to be. Uh, and then I want to have the miniature models set up. I'll light them like you would a real set, and then I'll just take, get my camera. I'll take pictures from this angle, from that angle, whatever the appropriate angle is for where the actor would be standing, and then I'll composite the background in behind the actor. And that's the way that I'm able to get these you know, more fantastical uh, environments. Wow, you're making on a, a very small budget. <laughs> you're making movie magic, man. I tell you what, I got look. I obviously I shouldn't compare myself to what you do. Like I don't even do that, so I'm nowhere near it. But I got to listen. I got myself the green screen. I figured I'd start shooting me a little things here and there. And you know, I've got the little Earth spinning in the background and stuff like that. I'm nowhere near that. Like that, that stuff that just and look when I saw it, I kind of figured I'm like, okay, that's probably what he's working with. I mean, I know they're not in space, you know what I mean, necessarily, you know, every day. But yeah, wow, and, and this is in your wait a minute. So you telling me when you guys are inside taking this mission, um, um, you know, from what, what is her name, the Rain and Princess? Who is she? Uh, Princess Sunflower is her name. Okay, when you guys are inside taking, um, you know, taking the mission from the princess, you uh, you you did all of this in the garage, Ian. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's just me. It's Ellen Moore, actress, and myself sitting in just two regular chairs. I'm not even fancy chairs. And uh, out in front of the green screen, there's nothing there. Glasses before the actors. You know, there's no one here. There's a door right here. Walk through the door. And I'll put some tape on the floor so they know what to walk between. I'll wipe it. Forty two hours. I think that would be lit. Then we shoot it. Yeah, and then so the the models, the little spaceship that we're flying in, is about two feet long. It's made out of a, a, a bottle. <laughs> Right. Floppy disk drive glued on the side of it. There's you know action figure packaging for the cockpit. It's whatever. Oh. There's some baking piping thing glued onto it. So all just household items that I glued together. Man. And the interior of the cockpit. That's another set. So I had to build that. That's about a foot deep. So it's you know it's, <laughs> hey, look, it's a lot of work to build all these things. And I've been it's taken about two years to build all this stuff. And yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, and listen. So so look to all the listeners out there. Uh, before we go later on, we're going to make sure you know all the social media sites and, you know, the websites and things like that to check out Ian's work. But I, I want to stop and just say this right now. Go look. Don't do it while we're on the interview. Wait till we finish the show. <laughs> but go look and check out uh, John Neptune. 
and, and just look at this because again people know that there's movie magic out there man but look i'm a, it, honestly i have to say like you are incredible with that because you I, I thought people would think you're on a spaceship in this film you know what i mean like no two ways about it yeah like you really have that and and just the, the way you manage to uh when you watch it the way you manage to give all this this space behind you you look like there's so much space when all you guys are standing in the room like, like I tell you, have you done any? Are you working on any features? Or have you worked on a feature yet? Um, technically, the Glass Adventures of John Eckley is a feature film. Oh. It was written uh, as a full two-hour full-length feature film, but then I chopped it up into these five-minute episodes to make it more accessible to people, so they can watch, you know, on their lunch break at work, they can watch a five-minute episode. And also, it gives me uh, easier deadlines and goals. If I were to say I want to make a two-hour fi- film in my garage, I get you know ten minutes into it, and they'd be like, "All right, I'm bored." Uh, I, you know, it would be overwhelming. But yeah. this way, it's, it's an easier way for me to, to have these small deadlines of five minutes, done with that, and go on to the next five minutes, done with that. Plus, I can put them on long while I'm still working on the film, and people can watch it and get into it, and then you know, have to wait for the next episode coming out next month or whenever I get it done, because it takes a long time. But once the entire series is finished, by the end of probably middle next summer, I guess, I'm going to have it done by then. Uh, when, by the time it's, the entire series is finished, all three seasons will be edited into one full feature film. And it, again, it's written that way. It's got a three-act structure. So this is my only experience of actually doing a feature film. You know what? You did that. Look, I, I have to say, you know, it, smart move. Definitely smart move. Because you're right in everything you're saying that sometimes people go on. Look, but see, a lot of people do episodes, but they're not all catchy. You happen to do one that's catchy. And that's what I like about it is that you can watch this and like, OK, what's going to happen in the next one? It's kind of like dun, dun, dun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, at the end. And so people are really interested in what's going to happen in the next one. I could see this this whole situation be being able to play out later on. And 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 you know, you kept it friendly to the people too because like you say, you didn't want to you didn't want to risk people um getting bored, you know, and things like that. Yeah. And having respect for like you said, okay, I can watch this for a minute while I'm sitting here, you know, I'm between classes, there's nothing to do or like you say I'm on lunch break and and get a good show. Did you did you plan it like that from the beginning, or? Well, I, I guess not, so. Not, <laughs> I guess the, the, the original thing, I don't want to ramble too long as I can do that when I get talking about the origins of John Neptune. Oh, go ahead. But uh, I originally, about what, six years ago, wrote a whole 90 minute screenplay about John Neptune and the fun characters. And I thought, this is a really cool thing. I want to make this, but it's a huge endeavor. I can't make this big, gigantic feature film. Right. And so I spent the next four years thinking about this. Hey, up a concept, so, yeah. hey, sorry. All right, Ian, can you hear me? Yeah. Listen, I was going to say every now and then, I, I don't know if the phone's moving or whatever, but it gets a little muffled every now and then. So just. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Yeah, my, I have a weird phone. That's all right. Oh, that wherever, you at, wherever you're at right now is really cool. I hold perfectly still. All right. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll try to sum it up. So I originally wrote this full 90 minute screenplay about John Neptune, and it ended up being too big and I didn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. So I spent the four, next four years of my life in, in, among doing other things, kind of thinking of it, planning out stuff, working on backstory, fleshing out the universe. And then uh, I turned 30 a few years ago and I thought, I don't want to turn 30. So I wanted to distract <laughs> myself from that. So I decided to make a short film. Mm-hmm. And so I took these characters of John Neptune and I wrote a backstory to them. And it was a 15-minute film called John Neptune and the Siren's Vengeance. And I showed that at my birthday party and had a great time and everybody loved it. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, cool. I'm here. Yeah, my phone made a noise. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so I, made this, I made this short film, and it was it ended up being episode two of the, the web series. Oh, man. And so once I had this short film, I thought, this is pretty cool, and I have other ideas about backstory for John Neptune. And so I ended up writing them down and came up with the entire web series, and then I realized the web series would be a, a cool way to present it and possibly get some exposure online. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so... That's kind of how it started. It wasn't originally going to be a web series. It was originally this other completely separate story that I decided to write backstory to. So this whole web series is kind of like the backstory that I wrote for the other story, wow. but it's its own self-contained theme. So whether or not I ever make this other story that I wrote six years ago, I don't know. But at least this web series has come out of it. Yeah, and um, and, and there, there's no, you know, there hasn't been any really good, you know, um, funny space stories that I think people you know, have, have been able to watch for quite a while. So I, I you know, continue on with this one. Cause I definitely see cool, this one. Definitely see this one being something. I look, I, you're going to turn me into a space fan out of nowhere. That, see, that, that, that's really good for me to hear because like I said, you, you're not a big science fiction fan, but you like it. And I, I, I'm, you like it because it's, it's written to be 
you know, accessible to everybody. And I'm hoping that people can take things out of it and apply it to their everyday lives. Take it being something that's going on and, and think, hey, that's kind of like what's going on in my life right now. I'm not a big sci-fi fan, but that's, you know, I'm hoping it will speak to people. Right, right. Now, um, are there any other um, film projects that you're you're in a, a web series that you're working on or, or got, you know, any ideas stirring around? Oh, definitely. I definitely have many ideas. I have probably about eight more ideas for short films, feature films, and another web series as well. Wow. Um, there's a, a short film that I did a couple of years ago for my wife's birthday. Uh, it was two weeks before her birthday. I wanted to make her a film for her, for her birthday, and I wanted her to be in it, but I didn't want her to know what it was about. So wow. I had a green screen in the garage. I put her in the steampunk costume that she had made for her in the previous year, and I had the short story written, and I would basically put her in front of the green screen. I said, okay, Diana, I want you to look here, smile. Now point your gun over here. And, you know, and do this, do that. And she didn't know what she was doing, but she was in front of the green screen, having a fun time. And I spent the next two weeks putting the short film together. And then at her birthday party, we showed this, you know, four minute long steampunk little adventure film starring her. And it was fun for her to see it for the first time because she didn't know oh, what it was about. Wow. But that's a, another short film that I really like that I, that I did called The Astounding Adventures of Victoria Vanderbilt. And she's like this Victorian vigilante character. And I have another story idea that I want to do with her. So probably in a couple of months, once John Neptune season two starts to wind down, and I want to do this another Victoria Vanderbilt short film. Oh um, man, that, that must be, it, that was cool right there. Yeah, <laughs> that was cool. Okay. Holy cow! Did, did, did you watch that one too? No, I didn't see that one. Oh, I'm gonna okay. I'm okay. gonna watch that one though. Like <laughs> that was really cool. Holy moly! Yeah, so I, have, I have that one. I want to do. I have a a really serious drama that I want to do. That's about mm -hmm. nostalgia. I have uh, a, a, another kind of sci-fi horror comedy that I want to do. It's kind of a like a buddy picture with an alien. I don't know how to describe it. but uh, mm. And then a thing that I want to do after John Neptune, it's pretty ambitious. It's a, a sci-fi comedy, and I'll say nothing more than that, other than the fact that it's going to be sci-fi comedy and it's going to cost a lot of money. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm working on the store for that one right now. Okay, okay. Look, hey, well, I, look, in that one, you might you might have to get out the garage a bit to do that one, huh? Exactly. Yeah, I can't shoot that one in the garage. It's <laughs> bigger. Hey, look, we look I, with this room in the garage. Li listen, did um, did the, did the well? No, I guess not, because I'm sure she's like really supportive. You're doing all this thing. Have you? I guess there's no need to. You the cars can't be in the garage, obviously. Then. No, I haven't. I've never parked a car in a garage before. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> no, that makes sense because of what you do, right? Like that. Listen, all. Yeah. It, listen, in your field, space is valuable. Yeah, definitely. It, it means everything. I film in. Look, I look. I'm giving away my secrets. I film in the room, and like all the rooms of my house. Uh, uh, you know, I film in spaces for me. So, um, look now, now, congratulations. Uh, you know, we're, we're going a little bit, then we'll come back. But you know, I, I want to say kudos to you on uh, being 2015 a uh, Galactic Film Festival director. So, uh, applause for that. Thank you. Are you I, look? I can't ask you. Are you ready for it? Because wow, you are more than ready for it. I mean, look at the, <laughs> look at what you're doing. But uh, what what you know? Again, and I always have to say without giving too much away because I understand the position that you guys are in. But um, what what you know? What can we expect for you know possibly that you might bring to the table? Um, you know, similar or different than you know what was going on, or any new fresh ideas that, that we can kind of expect or. Hmm. Well, I guess without giving too much away. Right. Uh, I think, I don't, I'm not sure, I, this is a really big thing for me. I've never actually done a film festival be before, so I'm really honored to have been asked to do this by LJ. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to do it, and I think it's going to be cool because I was at the Galactic Film Festival last year, and we actually won Best Web Series. And so it's, to me, it's exciting because I was on the other end of it. This year, I'm going to be there kind of talking to people, inviting people in, and right. um, I guess, you know, I, I've been there, and I'm still in their shoes. And so it's, Pretty exciting. Well, that's amazing. And, and like you say, you guys won. And that was uh, 2014. You guys won for that, too. I saw the uh, picks on the red carpet. Uh, it always feels amazing to to win. But just, you know, from a personal point of view, considering how much hard work you and your teammates and your cast and everybody put in, how did it feel for how did it make everybody else feel? Oh, it's it amazing. I think I mean, it was for, again, all of our hard work, it's not we doing it. There's a lot of us working on it. There's my friend Rachel, she's doing it. There's my friend Trisha, she's doing all the music for it. So it's just, it's very rewarding for all of us to, to know, to be a part of the, the project, I think. Mm -hmm. um, people, so everybody that's been working on the show has been really enthusiastic and really supportive on it. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, it's, it's very rewarding to actually get honored. I mean, to, to be named 
uh, you know, our best web series is how all that work is paid off and people actually like it, you know? Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, you, did you guys, um, did you, uh, did you, well, I'm assuming you didn't know you were going to win, but did you, when, when you won the award last year, did you have to go up and, you know, give an acceptance speech or was that the norm or? No, that was the first thing I'd ever won. I mean, I think in maybe an <laughs> elementary school, I probably won something. I don't know, but I mean, that was the first thing I'd ever gotten recognized for. So that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, the reason I asked that question is, you know, just, I guess for myself and everybody out there, like, you know, when you watch award shows or people win awards, it's like everybody goes oh, up yeah. and, and, you know, they kind of know it's like, okay, you know, and they know who they're going to thank. And, you know, people always wonder. I, think I, I didn't even think about it. I just stepped up there and I was like, oh, I guess I need to give a speech and start thanking people. So That's what I was wondering, right? Like, you know, I, that's what I was wondering. How did that feel to you? Like when you get up there, you're like, okay, I don't know who I'm going to thank right now. Uh, you know, but I guess it yeah. comes natural to you. It's very natural because I know who's important and I know who's true in my life and to the project and everything. So it, it became very naturally. And I've always been kind of a shy person. But, you know, in recent years, I've gotten a bit more out there just kind of out of necessity. Right. So getting up in front of all those people, it was just, it, it was humbling. It was really, it was really nice. I don't know. <laughs> where do you find, um, where do you find, a, where, as a writer, where do you find, and we know where you find some of your inspirations from, but how, just, just kind of where does it, where does it begin? Because, you know, I know with situations like um, with a lot of writers that you write, these are not situations that you walk down the street and just see happening. You know what I mean? I mean? Obviously, we're not going to different planets and stuff. Is that what you, what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've, I've always been a big science fiction fan, especially Star Wars. That's been really inspirational to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and write a story after you're really careful to not tread the same waters that Star Wars has tread. You know, all the writing... And then I'll realize, wait a minute, didn't a comic book from Star Wars do this one time? And yeah, it did. So I got to kind of go the opposite direction, keep it original. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I've always liked the, the, the pacing of Star Wars. There's also a lot of kind of Battlestar Galactica influence uh, in John Neptune. Right. But it's just, I've always been a, a big sci-fi fan. So I just kind of write what I want to see right. based on things that I've seen in other movies. It's like I, I like the way things go in movies. And so I, I think I know the, the basic formula of, and story structure of, of storytelling and, and movies and everything so you, you definitely uh, yeah I, I have to say you from what i've seen you surely do now can you see yourself going the horror sci-fi route sometime oh definitely i'd love that one of my favorite films is alien and so i, I love the idea of, of sci-fi horror um right as of right now i don't have any ideas in mind but it would be really cool to someday do something really truly scary i think to really speak to somebody on a, on a psychologically horror horrific level i'm not a big fan of the slasher horror films but i love psychological films, but i think alien is one of the best ones you know what? That brings me. I, I'm glad we went back there because I almost forgot. And and I'm really curious now, just knowing where you guys shot this at and filmed this at. That monster that was in the background, in 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 movie terms, uh, you know, in in your film terms, what would you call that? Like, did he have a name? It, like, which which monster are you talking there about? There was this thing. Okay, when it was originally was coming, it an, an older older gentleman talking yeah, to like, the yeah, monster in the shadow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that, I can't say too much about it, because that's a, a really kind of uh, secretive character that I'm hoping to reveal oh. in the very distant future, but okay. that character, the way that I made that, that monster, as you call it, mm -hmm. um, it was actually just a stock that I cut out some foam wow. into the monster's head, okay. glued that on with some hot glue, spray painted the whole thing tan, and then just lit it, back lit, so it was very mysterious looking. Man. It's a really generic, boring looking puppet if you look at it in good lighting. But the concept design that I did on a piece of paper is pretty interesting looking. And so I wanted to kind of give the basic features of the creature without actually showing too much of it. So that's why it's all in film yeah. you don't see what it actually looks like. You're good. But it was just a stock puppet, and I shot it at, uh, I think, 60 <laughs> frames per second. You so know, I was able to slow it down and give it kind of an otherworldly, unnatural feel the way it moved. You know what? You're good. And I, I didn't even, you know, I did not expect you to give that much away about it. Because, again, I really want people to go see this. I don't and I don't want everybody out there when you go look at this to already know what, you know, for him to have told you everything. But you're good. But I you don't know who the character is or what it's all about. You know how he is made, but he's still pretty secret about it. Yeah, because he just like kind of, you know, sticks his head out the back and goes back. But I tell you what, I never that that description you just gave me, I never would have saw that coming. I'm thinking he was Whoa. an offspring of E.T. or something <laughs> of that. Like, you know, that that was a vision I got. Um, right. Now, what, um, you know, what can we, uh, can you ever see yourself coming away from sci-fi, possibly? I know that's where your heart is. But, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love science fiction. And, you know, John Neptune is kind of something I've wanted to do for a long time. 
But I would, I would love to do other things that are not science fiction. Mm -hmm. um, actually, now that I think about it, all the other stories that I have in mind do have a, a kind of fantastical element to them. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have one, like I said, that, that I would have come about nostalgia. And it has a, a kind of fantastic element, but it is very much rooted in reality. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did a film years ago for Halloween. You know, every year for Halloween, my wife and I like to make short films to show our friends and, and family. Right. But we did one a couple years ago called Shattered Flames, Three Tales of Deadly Romance. And while it's still horror, it was rooted in reality based on realistic people, and there was nothing really magical or, or monstery about it. Um, and so that, that's probably the most normal thing that I've done. Uh, but yeah, someday I'd love to do a, a straight comedy or a, mm. not really a romance movie, but a, a drama or something like that. Yeah, because I can see, you know, just looking, I can see you, you have that dramaticness. Um, you know, just a set face that you could be able to pull off an amazing dramatic role, you know, just just simply from eye contact and, and, and you know, just just the way not watching the camera, obviously, but just with the camera watching you, I should say, you know, from what I see. Yeah, I'm, I definitely more into comedy and everything. And whenever I have to do the dramatic stuff for John Epstein, there's a lot of kind of romance stuff in season two and in season three as well. It's some really dramatic acting. It's mm. really difficult for me. Uh, my, my friend, the director Rachel, she had to really kind of work with me to get these emotions out of me because I'm not used to doing, you know, the, the serious face, the kind of soft, really almost <laughs> not brooding, depressed, but very just very very serious yeah. part of John Epstein. It's a bit more difficult for me to do. I, it's easier for me to do the fun and you know, over the top yeah. acting. So it's been a, a nice challenge, and I think I've learned a lot as far as acting just on this project. Oh. Where I think I can do the more serious dramatic stuff now. I think you can too, because looking at you, I, I can see, I, I can look at you and tell you can get mad now. You, you, you know. Yeah, yeah, now, now I learned how to get mad. <laughs> and that helps when when uh, the director is one of his friends and she physically shows you against the wall to oh. get you to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pain in your chest. It lingers when you're actually acting. <laughs> right, you're like, hey, wait a minute. Then they're like, okay, good, we got that shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a lot of fun, and again, a big learning experience. Right. Um, okay, now I know you said there's things you 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 uh, uh, ideas in the future. Is there anything um, that you can talk about that that we can expect coming up? Um, like that we should be looking out for now, or are you just kind of focused? Right, yeah. Right now we're really focused on season two. Okay. Uh, by the end of April, we should have the next episode online for free on on YouTube. Oh. Uh, so that's where the next is the next three episodes of season two. And then once we're done with those three episodes, season two is going to be over. We're going to take a, a break for a few months from John Epstein as far as releasing any kind of content. But uh, like I said, well, I want to do another steampunk film with my wife, do another uh, mm -hmm. Victoria Vanderbilt uh, vi vigilante type film. Right. Uh, it's, it's kind of a short five-minute music video steampunk film, I guess. <laughs> so that's probably the next project that we'll be doing that's not John Epstein related. Right. And you know, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing, a, you're doing great too because there's a lot of series out there. And, you know, people are charging people or films and people charging people to watch these films that are not so good. And here it is. You're doing a great uh, series and you are have you, you are making it so people are, are able to watch it, you know, for free. Yeah. And that says a right. lot. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's online for free because I want people to see these stories. I think they're they're fun to watch. They're stories worthwhile and I want people to see them. And so that's just. My way of doing it is putting it out there so people can watch it. Hopefully, tell their friends to watch it. That means it means something. That you know, that shows that they really mean what you're doing. Your work it, it means something to you, and you just like doing it and, and putting it out there for people. Yeah, it'd be nice to make money on it, but as of right now, I don't know how to make money on it. So I'm just putting it out there so people can watch it, and hopefully someday it'll, it'll land me a job somewhere, and I can actually get paid to make films instead of you know paying to make films. Man, look, I definitely look. I definitely see it in the cause. I mean, I'm no psychic but you know like who am i to be saying but look i definitely see it just just you know from you know just being a, a, a viewer and a watcher just like any and everybody else that can watch a good show and know that it's really good um i definitely see that there's just no way that i could continue seeing you know because i'm looking again i'm already amazed at what you're doing i'm looking and i'm like okay this and again you shock me just where you shot this i mean so if, if listen anybody out there with the big budgets or anything uh like that if you haven't been looking uh, at this guy, you really, really need to check him out because he's guaranteed to bring your station some viewers. I, I see it. it like it, you're, you're you're part of the future um, end of of something that we've been missing. I, I want to say in in our last generation, definitely, because as you know, a lot of what you do, even with John Neptune, I hate to keep harping on that, but even with that right there being such great work, there is um. There's a lack for that. You know, we, we went through that craze and, you know, there was that phase yeah. where that was a big deal and it fell off. 
you know? Yeah. And, 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 uh, uh, thank you for saying that. That's something that I see also. A lot of modern films, I mean, I like I like most movies that I watch, but it, I do see there's a lot of movies nowadays that are not as interesting. I mean, they, they remake movies. They got the new Total Recall, the new Robocop. They're not nearly as good as the original films. They had that great you know, 80s and 90s magic that's been lost in recent years. So it's kind of rare that an amazing sci-fi movie especially, but an amazing movie comes out now, nowadays. Right. And so I, I'm trying to capture, I don't know if I'm succeeding, but I'm trying to capture the, the feel of that I, of movies that I grew up with in the 70s and 80s. They were fun to watch. Well, you got it. So down. I want to make a fun film that other people can, can you know, enjoy the drama, but then laugh at it at the same time. Well, you got it down. I know I'm going to get in trouble because I'm going to spend some time catching up with all the webisodes so far. I know in my house, somebody's going to get mad, but you won't put that thing down. And <laughs> and look, I can watch it right on my smartphone. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, it looks great on your smartphone. <laughs> it's not a full HD, but it works on any format you can watch it in. Right. Um, now, uh, before we get ready to get out of here, um, the Galactic Film Festival, um, and you know, LJ and I spoke before, but I want to kind of go back with you two being director. Um, when is let everybody out there know when the Galactic Film Festival is coming up? If you if you know that information, and you know, I guess where they can go get involved and things of that nature, or what you would like them to do to get involved. Yeah, so the, the Galactic Film Festival is going to be most likely the last weekend in August. They haven't set an actual date yet, but it's most likely going to be the last weekend in August this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, start go online, and you can buy your tickets uh, in mid-April. They're going to put those up there. Oh, awesome. So it's right around the corner for everybody to go ahead and get yeah, right. 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 And, and, and if you're interested in submitting or if you're a filmmaker, you can submit. You've already missed the first couple deadlines, but there's still you know the, the drop-dead deadline. Mm-hmm. I think today's actually the... The, the final deadline before the drop dead. So if you want to save some money, you'll know, submit today your, your films. Uh, you go to the website, you can submit it. Um, yeah, it, it's a great experience. It's great to be a part of the film festival because you meet other filmmakers that are you know like minded, and it's, it's it's fun to learn from other people to see to hear their experiences, and also just a fun way to see you know other things you wouldn't otherwise see. You know, you go to the theaters, you have to see all the movies that Hollywood puts out, or you can go to a film festival like this and see all these other independent films that you'll never see anywhere else, or at least not right now. These are just you know, independent filmmakers making films, and it, it's a lot of fun. Right. Now, you know what? You deserve to be where you are in this position with the Galactic Film Festival, obviously being, you know, such a master at your craft. And I've got to, you know, and so you're now you're director of the festival, but i got to ask this question. Does it at all, it obviously shuts you out because you can't submit a film at this point, I'm assuming, right? Actually, I was surprised I can't submit a film. What? I, I couldn't. Oh. I can't be a judge, though, is the thing. If I'm going to submit a film, oh. I can't judge it. Okay, okay. All right, that, that makes sense. Because I thought about that. I was like, well, you know what? Being a winner, like, you know, and being so good at what you do. Okay, but see, that's good that you still can. Because I said to myself, you know what? Being a winner and being so good at what you do, did you feel like, you know, oh, man, was it crushing now because you can't submit to it? And did you feel like that took yeah, anything away from originally you? Originally, it was. But when LJ first asked me, I thought, ooh, that sounds awesome. I'd love to be a festival director. But I also wanted to submit John Neptune season two. And then I asked him, and said, yeah, you can still submit it. So, yeah, it, it worked out that way. Oh, man. I don't mean to say that. Well, I can't say it. I was going to say, I hope the competition is good because John Neptune is Thank serious. You know, we had some good competition last year. We met some really cool people last year. There's another web series called Walking in Circles, and they're a, a fantasy comedy. Uh-huh. They were really great people, and they had another fun show. So it's just you meet great people, and you keep in contact with these people. Yeah, and you guys have people submitting from a lot of different countries, too. Yeah, all around the world. Uh, I'm they're still submitted. I don't know if they've filled up yet, so there's still time to submit. Oh, awesome, awesome. All right, well, uh, listen, uh, before we get ready to go, let everyone, uh, listen, is there anything else, anything you want to plug that we haven't talked about? Any projects, any dates coming up, any, uh, uh, anything? Right, um, I guess the only thing since I'm working so heavily on John Neptune right now is uh, check out our web series, The Galactic Adventures of John Neptune. You can watch the entire series so far at www.neptunecinema.com. That's neptunecinema.com. Uh, we have uh, 15 episodes up right now. We're going to be putting up a new episode by late April. Uh, also on the website, there's a weekly update that I put up progress pictures of whatever we've been shooting or whatever models that we've been working on. And so you can always kind of follow our progress and see what we've been working on and see that we're still, you know, still working at it. That's so, awesome. yeah, just check out our series. It's, it's have a lot of fun. That's awesome. You know what? And I, I want to ask you, too, because I, I had posted on, um, I went and got one of your episodes and I posted it on my page. So I wanted to ask you now while I want to air, is it OK if I go to your YouTube page and, and every now and then take an episode and put it on my Facebook page? 
Totally. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. I, 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 that's, that's the biggest thing is we just want exposure. We want people to watch our show because it's, we have okay. fun making it. We think it's a good product and we just need people to watch it. Okay. So we also have some behind the scenes on, on the YouTube. There's some interviews with actors and some special effects breakdowns so you can see how I composite everything and tell all that. Uh, oh, okay. That's awesome. Because look, when I saw this stuff, I said to myself, I go, you know what? I, you know, you know, you know, every now and then you follow you follow things that you you know they hit you or they hit me as a person. So I I want to show it to other people. Be like, yo, check this out because I know people are gonna think it's cool. And so I had done that with um you know I had done that with one of your episodes of John Neptune, and that's why I was wondering you know I, from time to time I'll be posting posting some other ones up and that way people can check it out because everybody I want you to see it I want you to see this guy's work and you'll be amazed that you're watching something that was not from way back when. And that you'll actually enjoy watching, but you still get a different visual of, than what you've been seeing. So you really get the best of both worlds. For the, you know, for for the for the people with with you know some years under their belt, they know where it's coming from. And for the for the yeah, new, I, go ahead. I think it's it's funny. I think our biggest fan base, like whenever we go to conventions and things to to pass out flyers and tell people about the show, mm-hmm. our biggest fan base is probably you know. Rachel, the director, her she's a seventh grade teacher, so her kids love the show. So yeah, yeah. kids love the show, and then I find older people always kind of come up and they gravitate to it. I'll say, you know, it's, it's kind of like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers, and they say, oh, I grew up with those, and so you know their eyes light up, and so it's fun seeing it's the opposite end of the spectrum. You know, kids and older people really flock to it. They really do, and they really, and I can yeah. tell that. All right, uh, listen, Ian. It's been amazing talking to you, and of course, you know we'll be talking again. Um, you know, as you know, as things as, as the the clock closes down on Galactic Film um, Festival, anyway. Um, you know, we'll be talking more and, and keeping up with what's going on. We're gonna we're gonna um try to put something together, as a matter of fact, so that you know I I can get to talk to you guys live from the festival. That would be awesome. Oh wow! Huh? Yeah, that would be cool. Like. Some some kind of right on the spot coverage or something like that with the Keith Ferris show. So uh, yeah, look look listen, Ian. It's been you know it's been a blessing talking to you, man. Look, you you know I want to call you a uh, a a I don't know the the, the 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 correct word for it, so I'll just say screen genius. You know what I mean? Um, and, and and special effects genius as well because wow, the spaceships, the monsters, and all of that. Like you're doing your thing, man. And um, I I you know there's a lot of people out there who do great work but at the same time their heads are really large their heads are blown up um there's a lot of ego with it and one thing that i want to say about you man that i've noticed you know is that you do extremely good work but you are so down to earth and you're so down and and, and you're so cool you know what i'm saying and i I think that really means a lot man that that says a lot a lot of genuineness to that Thank you so much, Steve. That's really nice to hear. <laughs> no, I like, you know, I mean, that's just the truth, man. You know, you, you listen, I, I don't see a bragging bone in your body. You just, you, you do what you do. You're good at what you do. You know your stuff. Um, and, and it shows that you care about the people and the viewers in general. And that says a lot about just, just how you must be in everyday life. So kudos to you for that, man. Big shouts out to you. Uh, and, um, yeah, thank you so much. No doubt. Thank you for having me on the show. It's been a lot of fun talking to you today. Yeah, man. Look, like I say, I you know it was, it should have been happened. I know LJ wanted to get at me. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> you know, uh, listen. Big shouts out to LJ Rivera too. Um, you know, yeah, and just LJ is great. <laughs> oh yeah, super cool. LJ he puts on the film festival and he found a, a convention last year and he liked what he saw and it's just. He's a really nice guy. He's he's, he's, well, he's, he's a very genuine, down to earth person as well. He's, I, I can hang out with that guy all the time. Right, right, absolutely. I'm looking forward to getting out, um, getting out to the West Coast soon and, and kicking with you guys as well. So, all right, look, um, Ian, look, listen, you have a wonderful day. I know, um, six five foot. What well, it's probably it's like three something, three and some change out there right now. See, so I got a still got a lot of daylight ahead of y'all. Oh, yeah. Right. All right, man. So look, you you enjoy your day, and um, Ian, I'll be talking to you soon. Listen, everybody out there, listen to the uh, Keith Hurst show. Of course, I'm your host, Keith Hurst. You've been tuning in with myself and the wonderful actor, writer, Galactic Film Festival director for 2015, Ian Pugh. Make sure you go check out his work on YouTube. Um, um also go to his website. Um, oh, your YouTube page is also is it Neptune Galactic or what is it? I believe it's, it's uh, YouTube.com/slash Neptune Cinema. Okay, yeah, okay, all right. 
youtube.com neptune cinema either way you'll be able to find it posted on um, my social media site i keep you updated with that as well um also in case you tuned in late or missed some of the interview as well it will be posted up on social media shortly so you can catch the whole conversation um between mr ian Pugh and myself and um Ian, wonderful work. I'm gonna check out the uh, the other the other uh, webisodes you did also, man. I'm gonna check them out a little later on once I get settled in. It's gonna give me something to watch. Cool, thank you. And if you're interested, I also have all our short films. You know, the, the Buster Keaton type film, Die Take Die, Matter Plans. All of our other films are also on NeptuneCinema.com. So you can, if you yeah. got some time to kill, just you know, watch our movies. <laughs> I, I'm going right. Look, I'm going down. I'm like, look, I found, I found it. I found the site, so I know where to go now. <laughs> Uh, me, cool, thank you. Yeah, me and my lady actually, we sat here and we were looking them up too. It was like, oh, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's up. We'll definitely be tuning into you, brother. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Keith. All right, and we'll be talking soon. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right, bye bye. All right, cool. Bye. Everybody out there, you listen to the Keith Harris Show right here on the number one station on the net, Hotline Radio. That was the amazing Ian Pugh. God does amazing work, I have to tell you, all right? Make sure you go check him out on YouTube, um, see what he's up to, see what new projects he's uh, we can expect from him as well. Um, don't touch that dial. I'll be right back in just a few minutes. You listen to Hotline Radio, Keith Harris Show.